heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. And now let us read together. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I have always loved bread. Whenever I think about bread, I often reflect back to the days of my childhood to my great aunt. My great aunt and uncle were backdoor neighbors to us when I was growing up, and they were as close to us as any grandparents could ever possibly be, and so we spent a lot of time in their home. And so on occasion, we were, when we were over at my great aunt's house, uh, she would be making bread. And so she would take the flour and the water and the other ingredients and combine them together and We would watch her as she carefully made the dough. And then when she had finished making the dough, she would put it aside in order that it would have an opportunity to rise. And then when the dough had risen, she would put the bread dough in the oven. And it wouldn't be long before the aroma of freshly baking bread began to fill the house. When it was done, she would slice off a little part for each of us. I tell you, I can almost taste it now. You can keep your Glade plug-ins and your Yankee candles. Just put some bread dough in the oven to bake and let the aroma fill the house. There is no better smell than that. When I was a teenager and earned some money, Uh, delivering newspapers and cutting grass. Sometimes I would set aside a little part of that money and go to the mall where there was a bakery and uh, my brothers and my sister and I would sometimes buy loaves of freshly baked whole wheat bread. I have always loved bread. In the Mediterranean world of Jesus' day, Bread was the most important, the most basic part of one's diet. If you had bread and water or perhaps a little wine, you had a meal. And when Jesus said, I am the bread of life, he was not saying, I am like a loaf of wonder bread that you got from Kroger. What he was saying was, I am what you need. In order to live. I am the only one who can really nourish you. Along life's journey. When Jesus spoke of himself as the bread of life. No doubt his Jewish hearers. Would have immediately thought back to Moses. Who fed the Israelites in the wilderness. With a special kind of bread. Which God provided. That was called manna. And so not surprisingly, someone in the crowd called out, our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. And in reply, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. What Jesus is saying is, you may revere Moses, but I offer you something that even Moses could not offer. I do not give you bread that decays and only feeds the body. I give you bread that offers eternal life. All of the Gospels tell of Jesus' feeding of the 5,000 with the five barley loaves and two fish. In fact, that is the only miracle of Jesus that is recorded in all four of the Gospels. But only John tells us that the next day, a large crowd once again came to Jesus. And this time, Jesus reprimanded them, saying that they had only come hoping to be fed again. They were settling for just another bit of bread. 
He said what they should be doing is seeking after the true bread from heaven, the bread that gives life to the world. Now at first, the crowd took Jesus' words somewhat literally. Free bread, they thought. We're not going to pass that up. And so they wanted as much of this bread as they could possibly get. And so they cried out, give us this bread always. But in reply, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. As is so often the case in the gospel according to John, the crowd is thinking physical while Jesus is thinking spiritual. Bread in this story is simply a metaphor, a word picture For the life-giving, life-sustaining relationship God offers us in Jesus Christ. The bread Jesus offers satisfies our spiritual hunger, our spiritual thirst to know God. And to receive this bread involves believing. It involves coming to Jesus to find salvation and eternal life. Howard Rutledge, a United States Navy pilot, was shot down over North Vietnam during the early stages of the war. He spent several miserable years in the hands of his captors before being released at the war's conclusion. In his book entitled, In the Presence of Mine Enemies, he reflects upon the resources from which he drew strength in those arduous days when life seemed so intolerable. He writes, during those longer periods of enforced reflection, it became so much easier to separate the important from the trivial, the worthwhile from the waste. For years, Phyllis, his wife, had encouraged me to join the family at church. She never nagged or scolded, she just kept hoping. But I was too busy too preoccupied to spend one or two short hours a week thinking about the really important things. Now the sights and sounds and smells of death were all around me. My hunger for spiritual food soon outdid my hunger for a steak. Now I wanted to know about that part of me that will never die. Now I wanted to talk about God, about Christ, and about the church, but in heartbreak, the name that the POWs gave their prison camp, but in heartbreak, solitary confinement, there was no pastor, no Sunday school, no teacher, no Bible, no hymn book, no community of believers to guide and sustain me. I had completely neglected the spiritual dimension of my life. It took prison to show me how empty life is without God. This is the spiritual hunger that must be satisfied in each of us. Some of you here today are well fed, but spiritually hungry. You know about Christ, but you don't know Christ. You know how to go through the motions of being a Christian and a member of the church, but the one thing you still need to do is to invite Christ into your heart. You still need, as Peter said, to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins in order that you may receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is not only the hunger that must be satisfied in each of us, but it is also the hunger that we, as the church, have been entrusted with meeting in the world. In his book, Outlive Your Life, Max Licato tells about the day his wife asked him to stop by the grocery store on the way home and to pick up a loaf of bread. As he entered the store, he found himself in the cereal aisle. And he decided to pick up a box of Cheerios, Honey Nut Cheerios, his favorite. And as he put the box of Honey Nut Cheerios into the shopping cart, he began to wonder, 
I wonder if we need some milk. And so he decided to go back to the dairy case and get a carton of milk to take just to be sure. And of course, the milk reminded him of Oreos. And so he went to the aisle where the Oreos were located. And while he was on the snack aisle, he suddenly developed an urge for barbecue potato chips. And that led him to picking up some Bluebell ice cream as well. And soon his shopping cart was filled with all of his favorite things. And he went through the checkout, and when he got home, his wife looked at what he had bought, and she asked what? Where's the bread? <laughs> Most of us can relate to a story like that. Most of us can remember a time when we set out on a mission and then got distracted along the way. So distracted that we got everything or did everything except what we had set out to do. It seems to me that the same may be said of the church. It is easy for us to forget the bread. We sponsor dinners and preschool and exercise classes and scouts. And we forget the bread. People ask us about our church and we are quick to tell them about our children's programs and our youth ministry and our choirs and the friendliness of our congregation. And we forget the bread. We give aid to the poor. We offer after-school programs and do all kinds of other things. And we forget the bread. We forget to tell them about Jesus, the bread of life. It's not that those other things are unimportant, not at all. It's just that the one thing that we've been entrusted with above all others is the bread. And so today, I want to give you an opportunity to accept Christ into your life. Or if you've already done that on some prior occasion, to renew the commitment that you have made to him. That the bread of life might be real for you and satisfy the deepest longing, the deepest hunger of your soul. And then allow Christ to work through you to help meet this deep spiritual hunger of a world that is starving to death for God. Will you join me in prayer? Gracious God, we come together this morning in worship because there is within each of us a deep spiritual hunger to know you and to be known by you. And so we ask that you would come into our lives, into our hearts, as we invite Christ, the bread of life, to become real for us as we believe in him through faith, knowing that he will satisfy those deep hungers in order that we may come to know you more fully. And having been satisfied in that deep spiritual hunger that is within each of us, we now ask that you would allow Christ to work through us, that we might help to meet that deep spiritual hunger of the world around us that shares the hunger that we know. Lord, wherever we are, no matter what we are doing, in the church or outside the church, help us never to forget the bread. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let me invite you to join me in the litany as it appears in your bulletin or on the screens before you in response to the gospel for today. When we feel hungry for more of something, when we're not sure what that something is, we can remember that Jesus said, We feel distracted by other means of fulfillment in the world. Help us to remember that Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Come to me and everything 
when we find ourselves feeling inadequate or incomplete in our daily lives, remind us that we fill ourselves up on Jesus' sustaining words. When we look around at friends and strangers, assessing how we measure up to others, help us to remember that we are enough and are satisfied by God's grace when we hear Jesus say, When we worry that the satisfaction we have now may one day run out, let us rest in the truth and fullness of Jesus' promise. Let's stand together and sing Here I Am, Lord, in the United Methodist Hymnal 593. 